Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Crafty Terrain. My name's Lee and today we're going to be trying something a little bit different and it's a first for the channel. Um, so people have been asking me about my paint jobs and stuff like that um, and would I do some painting videos and I've never been really too keen. I like to keep my painting for myself and relaxation time on an evening and so on. Um, but with Cad Bane coming out, what I thought we'd do is thought I'd do it so I've yeah, set up a little tripod and filmed myself painting Cad Bane. Um, I'm not sure if this video is going to be great or not but um, Cad's turned out good and I'm very happy with the finished results so um, I thought we'll put this out there and see if people enjoy them or not and if it's received well then I might look to do a painting video once a month or something like that so um, let us know down in the comments what you think I'm not sure if it's going to be fantastic as in the setup and stuff like that um, because I haven't actually got all the equipment to do um, a painting like tutorial but what I did do is I set up a tripod and a small GoPro and just give it a shot really so hopefully you enjoy it um, and you pick up some tips for it and you can ask whatever questions you want on our social media or down in the comments and we will get back to you okay let's get into it okay so I've assembled the Cad Bane model I've left the hat uh, off so it's not glued so I can just put it back on later and so I can access all the face detail and on the shirt because the hat does cover quite um, a lot of the model and then what I'm just going to be doing here is planning how I want to paint and thinking about my paint scheme so I like to start in on the model and then work out so it causes less mistakes really that way so I think I'm going to start by painting like the inner shirt and um, the inner pants um, what I've done is I've highlighted with Chaos Black from Citadel and then a Xenophil highlight. Uh, so first colour going on will be Flat Brown from Vallejo Game Colour. Sorry, not Game Colour, it's Model Colour. And I'm just going to be picking up the inner shirt. So a nice thin layer of paint. I'm using a wet palette to water down my paints also and I do add water. And then just add them thin layers to the inside of the uh, so this is the chaps that I'm painting here then just moving over to the other leg so you might need one or two layers depending on how, um, how opaque your colors are so just let the first layers dry as you move over and then you can always go back. It's better to apply multiple thin layers than one thick layer. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the face. Okay, so I'm painting the face with um, Enchanted Blue. That's an old name for a Citadel Blue. I'm not sure what the new name is because I've still got some old paints. But you can check that out on Google. So again, make sure that your base layers are nice and thin, especially on the face. Because it's got some detail and it's also wearing like um, a head snood thing that the uh, pipes attached to from his like, breathing apparatus so there isn't that much blue skin on the face to look for we'll just get a nice coverage okay now moving on to his fingers so Cad's wearing gloves but the fingerless gloves so you will have his fingertips to paint so just pick them out um, don't worry too much if you get any on the uh, gloves because they're going to be dark brown and will get covered but we'll try and take care if you can Okay, so with the gloves done, what I'm doing now is I'm painting in the eyes. And for that, I'm using Blood Red from Vallejo Game Colour. 
And just remember to pull with your brush, so don't be afraid to turn the model. We never really want to be pushing. Okay, so now we're moving on to the inner pants and I'm painting them a dark grey. That dark rubber is Panzer, uh, it's Panzer Ace's dark rubber. I'm also using that same colour to paint the head look um, snud thing that he wears. I don't know what you would call that. And it's also going to be the same colour for the boots. Okay, so now we're moving on to his coat, and for that I'm using Beastie Brown from Vallejo Game Colour. I really love this brown, it's very rich in colour. And again, just apply a nice thin layer. You will probably need two, maybe three of these, so just put it on nice and thin. And just work around all the cape area. Just turning the model and angle it so I can get my brush into the inner parts of that cape. Okay, so now I've decided that I don't like the inner colours on the pants, I wanted more contrast, so I'm using a lighter brown, this is Monster Brown from the Army Painter, and it's a, a very pale brown, so it's just going to go nicely with the flat brown of the chaps, and I also decided to paint this on his inner shirt over the layer that was already there. So just don't be afraid, if you're painting your mini on the base layers, and you don't like the way it looks, you can make them changes at that point. And then I'm using the uh, model colour flat brown to paint the gloves now. Just being very careful not to get any onto the blue fingers now. Okay, so we're going on to the gauntlets, which is decided to paint um, heavy purple. It's the opaque range from Game Colour. And I like these paints because you can apply them and they usually just go on in one layer because they are the opaque. And it's a nice deep purple for the uh, gauntlets. Okay, so now we're moving on to paint the back and the strap to the back. And for that, I'm using Uniform Grey uh, from Army Painter. Again, with CAD being a lot of browns, I just wanted to add a different, um, quite neutral colour onto the model just to give some contrast to break things up. And now for all the metal work on the model, I'm using uh, Gun Metal from the Army Painter. 
and that's going to be used for his uh, the pipes and the little breathing apparatus that he's got and on his guns and on the rocky boots as well. Uh, so the brushes that I'm using, I use uh, Raphael Kalinsky, the 8404 range, really like them brushes and the size of this is a number one, uh, but you can pretty much do everything on the model, it's got really fine points, I'm picking out the metal uh, detail on his cape there, he's got some buckles and stuff like that. nice layer to cover them all you want to water down your, your metallics but not too much that the flakes become too sparse in there so you won't get that nice shimmer you don't obviously want it too thick that you hide all the detail I'm just picking out all the little details on the gauntlets and adding that gun metal to it. So there's like um, metal like rings where the gauntlets end and the gloves start. Okay, so with all the base layer on, I've just decided now to put the hat on. Still not glued on, um, and painting this beastie brown, same colour as the cape. And then the, around the bottom of the hat, um, where the head sits inside the hat, there's another rim that I paint with the flat brown, that's the same colour as the chaps. And then just turn the model to paint on the underside of the hat being very careful not to get any on the face at this point. Okay, and that's the base layers on. So I'm going to make sure that that's fully dry and then we'll move to shading. Okay, so I'm applying the blue wash now um, and then the, to the face and to the fingers and that is the uh, Citadel range dragging off nightshade and then uh, for the gauntlets I'm going to be using the uh, violet wash from Citadel. I think it's Drucci or something like that. Um, I really like the Citadel wash range, guys, and I do recommend them. It's the only washes I'll really use on my minis. I will use other brands on terrain and stuff, but for miniature painting, the Citadel range is far superior. A little bit more expensive, but worth the cost. So when we're applying shades, guys, we just want to make sure that we don't get too much heavy pooling. Just move it around with your brush. And if you apply too much to the model, then um, you can always just uh, use a wet brush to wick that off. Okay, now we're moving on to Agrax Earth Shade. And that's going to be going over all the brown areas, the dark brown, the beastly brown on the coat. And I want a good coverage here. Just move it all round into all the recesses and then just let the washes do their work and naturally flow into the recess. And I'm applying this straight from the bottom. You noticed I've used a bit of blue tack to stick my washes to because I'm sure if you've used Citadel washes before you've probably knocked one over and you know the pain of knocking your six pound wash over and losing it all so I do recommend sticking them down to something. Ok 
Okay, now the hat's back on. Just to apply the wash, it's still not glued on. It will be the last thing I do, will be gluing the hat on. Okay, so let the first layer of their washes dry and then we can move on. We don't want the two washes to mix together. Okay, so here I remember I forgot to use the blue wash on the fingers. It's not a big deal, we could just go back and pop that on there. Okay, so now we're moving on to Noon Oil, and that's going to go over all the grey, all the metal areas, and um, the dark greys as well. When I'm applying my washes, I do use a different brush. I don't use my brush that I use for my miniature painting. It's just a small uh, number one brush. And then this is going over the snood that's on his face, and then all over the pipe work and all the metal areas. Okay, so with all the shade nearly applied now, you want to give it a good 20-30 minutes to dry before you highlight. So again, starting with Monster Brown, and I'm going to come work in on the model out. So I'm going to highlight his pants, picking up all the raised areas. Now, be careful not to get stuff into the creases. So this is where we do we need to take our time and make uh, no mistakes really if possible. And this is also going to go on the shirt. Again, taking my time, filling in, picking up all them raised areas. So there's a bit of shirt there on the arm that you can see sticking out from the coat. And that's what I'm painting in there. Okay, so now moving on to my base layer to highlight up the gloves, and that's that flat brown. And now I'm just picking out the finger detail that is inside the gloves and the knuckles. When you start to highlight back up, it's always good to just return to your base colour for the first layer of highlights, and then you can push them highlights as much as you want with lighter browns over the top. Um, and a good way to just highlight your base colours up is I'll just use a bone colour um, I'll use Army Painters bone colour to just mix into the paints to push that tone a little bit lighter
So I've added some uh, of the bone colour to this now and I'm pushing the highlights even higher, just catching the very tops of the raised areas, not trying to cover all of my base layer. So you should have your shade layer, back to your base, and then with the bone added, just bringing them highlights so they really pop to the highest edges. And then again here, back over the fingers and picking out the knuckles. And when you're mixing for your paints, that's what's so good to have a wet palette. It just really helps to mix your colours together for the highlight stages and your wet blending. Again here, I've added some of the bone colour to do the inside of the pants with that monster bone. You can see there, them highlights are just getting pushed uh, with that skeleton bone added to the monster brown. Okay, so now we're moving back to um, his coat, and again, this is Beastie Brown as the first layer, and I'll do the same, adding this skeleton bone army painter in to bring that up as a work over. So just get your base layer back on first, over all them raised areas. And again, same on the hat. Beastie Brown to highlight the top areas and the main like, flappy bits to the hat and then I use the um, flat brown to highlight the rim. And you can push these highlights a little bit higher than the ones on the coat if you want because that's where most of the natural light will catch on the model would be on the hat. most of the model so take your time really work them blends wet blend them on if you want this is such a focal point of Cad Bane So this is just the base layer, that heavy purple going back over as the highlighted stage, onto the gauntlets. And again I use the same process, I add a tiny bit of skeleton bone to my mix on my wet palette and then just push the highlights on the most raised areas of the gauntlets. And this here is with the skeleton bone added. Okay, so now we've took the hat off and I'm going to be doing the face. 
again it's that base layer of enchanted blue and then just pick out all the raised areas cad's got quite a very detailed face he's got that wide nose and he's also got a scar on his face so don't paint in the recess of the scar just let the shade sit in there and that will just naturally be picked out for you Okay, so for the highlights on the face, um, what I'm mixing in is some electric blue from Vallejo Game Colour into my Enchanted Blue on my wet palette to just create that uh, short, slight shifting uh, colour tone and then you can push that as high as you want really. Uh, just use source pictures from CAD from the internet so you create a blue tone that you're happy with. And I'm using this same process when I move on to the fingers. Just checking that I'm happy with my shifting tones and that the blends look okay. And again, base layer onto the fingers, picking out the edges. Okay, so to highlight the bag, I'm just going back to the uniform grey and that gives you a nice highlight on top of the dark shade from the Noon Oil. Just got to take real care here now not to get any of this uniform grey on your coat or on your inner shirt because you've already done all the highlighting and we don't want to ruin that and have to go back and build them up. And then here on the bag, there's a flap and creases, just pick out the raised areas. And then I'm adding a touch of white um, from Vallejo model colour into this grey and mixing it together just to create that next tone of highlight and just running it down right down the centre of the strap. Then we're going back to our Panzer Aces dark rubber to highlight up the boots and the, um, the schnood that he wears. And it's really starting to take shape now and getting close to being complete. Okay, so now we're moving on to, um, I'm using a mithril silver, so the highest silver that I had, and that's from the old Citadel range, I'm not sure what it's called now in Citadel, and I'm picking out all the silver on the gauntlets, um, on the, the pipes, and 
this is what I use to highlight his guns and the uh, rocky boots. And that, that mithril silver over gun metal and a noon oil wash really does pop on a mini. And then just touching up on the uh, breathing apparatus on the back. filling in the eyes with a touch of red and that will be CAD done all that's left to do is glue the hat on and finish the base Okay, so that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope you found it informative and learnt some things around colours and um, like the way you can use like your palette to bring them browns up and things like that. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, leave us a like, guys. Um, and if you want to see more, remember to subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more painting tutorials, let us know. If this video is a success, great, we'll do them. If it's not, then okay, you know, it doesn't really matter. I needed to paint CAD anyway, and we just won't do a painting tutorial um, again. Remember to check out our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Crafty Terrain. And we do also have Patreon now, so if you want to support us there, that would be great. But if not, remember, it's always free to subscribe. Okay, everyone, stay safe and have a great day.